welcome everybody to the West of Ireland launch of Women for Europe. Today in Galway we are here to stand up for women. We are here to support Europe, to support European women and to support the European Union. The most important part of my professional work was when I uh, negotiated as a chief negotiator on behalf of my country the accession of Bulgaria and uh, I had uh, many many reasons then to repeat look at Ireland, look what they achieve, look how they flourish, look how they use maximum poten potential of their, of their wisdom, of uh, their ability to make right choices. I really never expected that I would find myself speaking to support the benefits of Europe with Irish women. Perhaps my first lesson is to understand that Irish voters are a little like a wise woman. They should never be taken for granted. And in uh, weeks ahead, the power infor of information about which you so eloquently referred will work to shape all this thought, a critical democratic decision in the life of Ireland and of Europe as a whole. The question is, on the EU wishes to develop its military power, Ireland will have to increase military spending at the expense of public services. The voice of Ireland was clearly heard and uh, from all the corners, from all the lawyers and policy makers, it's absolutely certain that what the Irish mothers are afraid of, that there will be obligatory military service, this one is not based on the treaty. Of course, if you have kind of operation like in Kosovo, we will send people who are willing to do this service on behalf of the Union, under the rules of the Union, uh, to keep the peace there. Uh, from my point of view, I'm very grateful to what Europe has given us already. Uh, and into the future, I'm looking to ask the Commissioner, what can Europe do to make sure that we can get out of this downturn as quickly as possible? I think that uh, I couldn't name the year or to say when exactly. But we better concentrate on means and rethink some of the policies and think also how and what does it mean to have social market economy now, how we could cope in this globalized world. So that's why this treaty is so important for the unity and for having quick decisions in needy times. Otherwise, we will really spend a lot of time until we have one anonymous decision. Ladies uh, and gentlemen, and it's predominant, predominantly ladies uh, that we are uh, giving a warm welcome to this evening uh, as the title of the event is Empowering Women Consumers Know Your Rights uh, in Difficult Times. It's really a great achievement what you, you did. Equality and empowerment for women has been a transforming power in building a better island and driving force in island contribution to building a better Europe. And Ireland, Ireland like uh, much of the rest of Europe, is going through an incredibly painful economic crisis in households across Europe from Varna to Varna, Varna is a Bulgarian city, women are facing the same desperate choices and how to pay the food and energy bills and how to feed and clothe the, and educate their kids, how to keep their business alive, how to hold down their jobs and pay for childcare. Together, Ireland and her European partners will see this crisis through. When we find that the market does not seem to be working for consumers, the European Commission will launch an investigation. For example, I have launched in-depth investigation into bank fees and the retail electricity market. This is especially pertinent in Ireland 
where electricity prices are very high and seems to be rising. In the age of internet and cross-border shopping, a modern and effective range of consumer rights is essential for our consumers. I have been farming background in this country and um, also as a working woman and a taxpayer. But um, one of the questions I have to ask for you is this. What, uh, if anything, do you know about genetically modified food? And what is the policy of the EU with regards to genetically modified food? Now imagine, you go to the Sunday market and if you don't have uh, a label from where this good is coming, it might be genetically modified. Who knows, maybe there are a farmer who somewhere is using GMOs and now in this case you are taking the risk. Of course you know who is the producer, that this is your next door neighbour, no risk. But I'm just trying to put together both things because in the European Union it is not allowed to produce food with genetically modified organisms. We have a committee, a scientific committee, which is giving a license to use genetically modified organisms, but we have it on corn, on um, in a, yeah, sorry, and in other one which, which name I don't know in English, but this is for the feed of, uh, of animals, but not for, for people.